Hi everyone. I'm doing something a little bit unusual. I'm going to actually talk to you. I just have had so many parents come through recently, uh, and quite innocently, unaware of the significance of mouth breathing and snoring and how it can relate to things such as teeth grinding, sleepwalking, sleep talking, night terrors, uh, their kids waking up tired, having problems with their emotions, their education, energy levels, their concentration, their behavior. That I just want to take an opportunity to explain things a bit. So it's important to have some baseline. So the baseline I want to share with you is that kids are not supposed to snore and they are not supposed to mouth breathe. And they're certainly not supposed to stop breathing at night. The red flags uh, for me as an ear, nose and throat are the things I've just mentioned plus uh, anybody waking up tired. If you're waking up tired, there is a sleep quality or sleep quantity or both problem. Any child that's waking up tired is in trouble. That child is not sleeping well, and as a consequence of that, their brain is not working well. I think it's really important to understand that the research shows that children that have breathing problems at night are at risk of brain damage and that is shown on what are called functional mri scans where we look at the child's brain and we measure it and we look at how it works we can look at how uh, parts of the brain are developing and and we can see damage and you also need to realize that any problems with concentration and behavior uh, emotional regulation uh, their, their education, uh, they, they are signs of a dysregulation of brain function. And if a child is waking up tired, this child needs help. This child is in trouble. The analogy that I use that I think is, is proving quite helpful is to think of it like this. Snoring is a noise that is made because the child cannot breathe properly. If someone was coming into your child's room at night, every night, and choking them, would you sit back and let that happen? How long would you wait before you decided to ask that person to stop coming into their room at night and stop choking your child? I'm pretty sure most people would be pretty much straight on to getting that person out of the room in a hurry. Well, the problem is if your child is snoring, if they're mouth breathing, if they're having sleep problems as a consequence, your child is choking themselves. It's the same thing. They have a compromised ability to breathe properly. So I'm not posting this to cause alarm. I'm posting this to, call, to create uh, an informed awareness. If we can start to understand this better, we can start to help the kids better. We know that there are so many children out there that are struggling, and a lot of it is because the parents don't know that it's a problem, uh, and that it can be because they just don't know what their child is doing at night. So let's change that. Go down tonight, watch your child, listen. Are they having any breathing problems whatsoever? What about the teeth grinding? Well, teeth grinding is a body stress response. One thing that'll make you stressed is not breathing properly. And you're not breathing properly, you're running out of oxygen, that sets off a whole trigger of cascade events that can culminate in teeth grinding. Likewise, sleepwalking, sleep talking, night terrors, restless nights where they toss and turn, disrupted sleep where they're coming up uh, in the middle of the night and coming into your room. There is a sleep problem if they are doing that. You need to get to the bottom of why. When it comes to children with breathing problems at night, the first thing that needs to happen is you need them seen by an ear, nose and throat doctor. Most of these children, if they have a breathing problem, don't need a sleep study. They don't need any special tests. They just need an ear, nose and throat doctor who is familiar with pediatric airway problems to have a look. Have a look at their ears because a lot of these kids have problems with their ears. Have a look inside their nose. You must look inside the nose. Now, sometimes we can do that with our little ear torches, and sometimes we need to use a nasal telescope. But you need to look. If you 
don't look, you don't find. You don't find, you can't fix. And then we need to look inside the mouth. And we're not just looking at tonsils, although that's a big part of it, but we're looking for other things that could be a problem. We're looking for tongue ties. We are looking for narrow jaws. We're looking for uh, teeth that are growing crooked. We are looking for other suggestions that it's not just related to tonsils or adenoids. We're looking out for allergy problems. We're looking out for reflux. There are so many things that happen when we assess these children. And it's all part of trying to work out which part of it's in the nose and throat problem, which part of it is a dental jaw problem, which part of it is a reflux problem, which part of it is an allergy problem, which part of it is something else. So please take this all on board and please, please share it. I see so many parents who really didn't know there was a problem and didn't think twice that their child who was mouth breathing and waking up tired had a problem at all. These children's lives are transformed. So please, don't leave your child struggling to breathe at night. Get them seen by someone who is very familiar with the whole gamut of pathology that can cause these problems and is willing to fix it expediently. The research shows two things. The longer you leave a child with this, the more likely brain damage happens. And the younger that they first start, the more likely the brain damage happens. So there is no too young. I don't want to tell you there's no too late either, but we need to find these kids and fix them ASAP. So again, please share this far and wide. I really want this message to get out. Thanks.